Welcome back to story time, everybody. We're all snuggled up and ready to tell another story. Are you excited to hear another story? Yeah. Yeah, you like hearing these stories, don't you? Today's story is called The Servant King. That's kind of a funny name. Do Are kings usually servants? No. No, What kings usually have servants, don't they? No. So it's kind of strange to call somebody a servant king, huh? Who do you think the servant king is? I don't know. You don't know? Should we read the story to find out? Yeah. Yeah. I think I know who it is, but we'll see. <clears throat> this is the story of the Last Supper from Mark 14 and John 13 and 14. It was Passover, the time when God's people remembered how God had rescued them from being slaves in Egypt. Every year they killed a lamb and ate it. The lamb died instead of us, they would say. But this Passover, God was getting ready for an even greater rescue. Jesus and his friends were having the Passover meal together in an upstairs room. But Jesus' friends were arguing. What about? They were arguing about stinky feet. Stinky feet? Yes, that's right. Stinky feet. Now the thing about feet back then was that people didn't wear shoes. They only wore sandals, which might not sound unusual, except that the streets in those days were dirty. And I don't mean just dusty dirty. I mean really stinky dirty. With all those cows and horses everywhere, you can imagine the stuff on the street that ended up on their feet. Do you know what that means? It means that nobody picked up the, the cows and the horses when they had to go to the bathroom. So then you might step in it. Would that be pretty yucky? Yeah, so they had some pretty stinky feet. So anyway, someone had to wash away the dirt, but it was a dreadful job. Who on earth would ever dream of volunteering to do it? Would you want to wash someone's feet? If they'd stepped in some yucky stuff? I don't think so. Only the lowliest servant. I'm not the servant, Peter said. Nor am I, said Matthew. Quietly, Jesus got up from the table, took off his robe, picked up a basin of water, knelt down, and started to wash his friend's feet. You can't, Peter said. He didn't understand about Jesus being the servant king. If you don't let me wash away the dirt, Peter, Jesus said, you can't be close to me. Jesus knew that what people needed most was to be clean on the inside. All the dirt on their feet was nothing compared to the sin inside their hearts. Then wash me, Lord, Peter said, tears filling his eyes, all of me. One by one, Jesus washed everyone's feet. I am doing this because I love you, Jesus explained. Do this for each other. Now, one of Jesus' friends had made a bad plan. No one else knew what the bad plan was, but Jesus knew, and so did Judas. Judas was going to help the leaders capture Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Go on, Judas, Jesus said, and Judas got up from the meal, left the room, and walked out into the night. Then Jesus picked up some bread and broke it. He gave it to his friends. He picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He poured it out and shared it. My body is like this bread. It will break, Jesus told them. This cup of wine is like my blood. It will pour out. But this is how God will rescue the whole world. My life will break, and God's broken world will mend. My heart will tear apart, and your hearts will heal. Just as the Passover lamb died, so now I will die instead of you. My blood will wash away all of your sins, and you'll be clean on the inside, in your hearts. So whenever you eat and drink, remember, Jesus said, I have rescued you. Jesus knew it was nearly time for him to leave the world and to go back to God. I won't be with you long, he said. You are going to be very sad, but God's helper will come, and then you'll be filled up with a forever happiness that won't ever leave. So don't be afraid. You are my friends, and I love you. Then they sang their favorite song and walked up to their favorite place, an olive garden. Did you understand what was happening in that story? What did Jesus do for his friends? He, I don't know. Well, first he washed their feet, and then what did he do? He, he, 
He broke the oh, bread yeah. and shared the wine. Do you know what wine is? It's a fancy type of juice. Does this sound familiar? Eating bread and drinking a fancy kind of juice? Does it sound like anything we do when we're together as a church? What if I say the word communion? Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. We haven't done that for a while because we haven't been able to get together as a church for a while. And that's been kind of hard for people, hasn't it? Because Jesus showed us communion so that we would remember the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross. And that whenever we had communion together, we would remember. Isn't that neat that Jesus did that for us to give us something to help us remember? It's hard to remember things sometimes, isn't it? Do you have a hard time remembering things sometimes? Mm. I know I do. So I think it's awesome that Jesus gave us this reminder to help us remember to come back to him and to confess our sins to him and to remember that he died for us to forgive us and so that we could be in fellowship together with other people. And it's hard right now because we don't get to do that, but we're going to get to do it again someday soon. And that's the hope that we get to hold on to. Isn't that pretty awesome? <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. I think you're having fun making faces in the video, aren't you? <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us for our story about the Last Supper. And I hope you'll join us again tomorrow and see what happens next. But we're going to wrap up today's story time. We thank you for joining us and we hope to see you soon and to be able to share communion again with you soon. Can you say goodbye for now? <laughs> Bye. <laughs>